nothing and everybody. Hello and welcome! <laughs> it's some horrible back. Well, we're like 10 minutes early. We're doing good. Hello. Oh, we? I didn't know Internet it would world. Held it stringently to the 2 o'clock thing. I also forgot to update all of my people. And you got quiet on my end. I don't know. Dang it. I don't know if I'm coming out, out on yours. Um, you should be. It might be that my ears are weird shaped and putting my headphones in is strange, so maybe it's better now. Well, I can double check real quick. We can, uh, I just got to, just got to pause some stuff real quick. Say a thing? Bananas. B A N A N A S. This audio test is bananas. B A N A N A S. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. That's like always my go to. I've written on like college things that are like, now write something, anything you want here. Well, the great words of Gwen Stefani. Yeah, so I, I can hear you. So. Cool. Theoretically, you should be heard. <laughs> you should be heard. Um, except now, for some reason, my little window for you is all kind of janked up. Oh, That's sorry. Okay. I moved stuff, kind of. <laughs> all right, so. Just leave that alone. We can finally kind of slowly get rolling. Because um, I can hear you. I can hear me. And Yay. So I get an update in the chat that I can't that they can't hear nothing that I'm probably getting trolled. Um, <laughs> hello and welcome to another to another episode of some sort of talk show. I'm Tyler. I, I'm the one that kind of goes off the rails and brings up weird topics and the one to keep everything straight and kind of smooth stuff over is even hello even <laughs> we didn't uh, like approve of that how come i can't take things <laughs> off the rail i want to doodle dumb stuff <laughs> <laughs> well because so far i was thinking about this last night and it was so far i just kind of propose things and kind of say things that i think is correct and then you're usually the ones just like well that might be true but <laughs> <laughs> okay I mean, I guess that that made sense in the last session, but this time, we'll, we'll see. Well, we might eventually, have to eventually, I will come across a topic in which, hopefully, you will go off the rails and I get to sit down and go, oh well, actually. <laughs> uh, all right, and you bring your bring your big boy glasses, <laughs> push them up on your face. So today we are talking about. What was the thing that I sent out to everybody? <laughs> Today we are talking know. about weapons. Items held by those without limbs to hold them, or just inappropriate limbs to hold them. <laughs> inappropriate. I like that one. <laughs> Put and... that in the place that it belongs. <laughs> <laughs> and to start things off, we have um, a cat with... Wait, is that Tabitha? <laughs> Well, I don't. Tabitha never did have a morning star, but it could be her. No, she. I had a cat once. Star, but she had. Um, it was Justin's throwing. Throwing knife. knife. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Like, weapons made her horny, but they did. And quackers with the stabbers. <laughs> Give me them grapes. <laughs> and you thought <laughs> geese were up were buttholes. Oh, well, geese are just like leveled up ducks. <laughs> this is this is this is true. Um, oh no, I accidentally put your file in a thing that I didn't want to put in. Okay, <laughs> saved in your memory forever. Oh no. Okay, there we go. All right, and to start things off, for me, I present oh, yeah. to you the most recent, the most recent good boy addition to Pokemon. Oh. The icon of Pokemon Sword. I believe he's. I believe his name is pronounced Zashian, Zashian, <laughs> something like that. So, anyways, 
This is going to be a pretty common theme of the of today's topic in which we have subject A holding subject B in the mouth between the teeth. <laughs> it sounds so much more awkwardly sexual than it should. <laughs> but we're going to try to keep it contained. So, but I mean, obviously since, you know, since that's the thing that you threw up there before I even presented anything with a cat with a knife in its mouth. Um, what, uh, what, what, what's your position on, uh, on, on animals holding thing, holding, holding, wep weaponizing their mouths in such a way? It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think it's an interesting concept, but ultimately, yeah, <laughs> it's something that I just kind of have to, like, push aside and just kind of let um, uh, my suspension of, of disbelief kind of take over. Yeah. No, I don't know. You gotta... I don't know how, how many people have tried to hold something in their mouth and do things. It's weird and bizarre. And I... It hurts when that grinding thing goes on just a little bit, like when you bite tinfoil. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I imagine that like whatever animal, like could you imagine the amount of rage that this Pokemon has that it has to deal with its teeth grinding down, but it's willing to do it to kill somebody. To fight for a couple of children that fight over like uh, like minuscule amounts of yen. <laughs> Is he the offensive, like, section of that thing to everybody that, anybody that's listening? I haven't been able to get my hands on the game myself, but, um, I mean, yeah. The, uh, the counterpart to him is the shield dog, which is not really a weapon, and he's not technically holding it, but I still think it's an interesting concept that they, <laughs> how they stuck a shield on on this doggo <laughs> shield dog oh, what <laughs> i like that <laughs> somebody what they what it was was somebody just looked at like their dog in a cone and they're like i got it <laughs> we've got another generation of pokemon to make that's like the opposite that's like the reverse cone <laughs> So we've got so we've got the, the the classic sword concept. We've got an actual defensive concept, and you know it's it's um, I I did try to look around for like as much variance that I could throw at this topic as as possible, and there aren't a lot of defensive things that people that I guess animals mostly like are given. Usually it's like oh how do we strap a gun to this thing or how do we put a sword in his mouth well not how do we put a sword in his mouth that's pretty that's pretty straightforward you bite it. i don't know you got a couple choices pointy bits not pointy bits the back end um got some... can you think of any other pokemon that had some weird some weird uh far-fetched uh cubone i don't know i was out of it man so. Cubone? I didn't watch it in that. Oh, and, uh, I guess so. How about Digimon? You were you were in that scene though, right? Kind of like a generation. The thing with the thing with Digimon though is that usually the the animator or the design artists gave them a limb to actually like an appropriate limb to hold those things, those items with, like uh, Cuba, like in the Pokemon section cubone actually did have like two fingers and an opposable thumb to actually grip you know to grip its bone with um farfetched farfetched did Just the thing that squeezed it under its armpit <laughs> <laughs> well farfetched um they did the same thing that disney did with donald duck in the sense that they turned the wing and they just gave him like kind of feather fingers that's what they did to donald right they didn't give him no. gloves. No, he, he had Goofy, legit hands. Yeah, because Goofy and Mickey had, like, the, the iconic glove thing, right? Yeah, but Donald had, like, his... Since he was already white, they were like, cool, you can just be one nasty glove. <laughs> Gross. 
Um, I don't know. I can't think of any other Pokemon that 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 shoved stuff in their mouth. But like, I'm, I don't know. I got out of it, man. Can you think of an alternative way that um, the sword dog could be wielding be wielding his sword? <laughs> Uh, oh i thought that was a laser and i was like what's the point of the shark (laughs) to hold the lasers (laughs) i don't know i was thinking of a spear but yeah i don't know maybe uh (laughs) if the sword dog could like uh it could have it like just strap it to its tail and then you just like you're like be a good boy can be a good boy who's a good boy and it just like flops its tail around slashing people to bits (laughs) yeah Sword tail. Oh, you know what? There was um, there was a Digimon actually that wasn't in like the mainstream cartoon at all, but um, it did have a like a big scythe for a tail, uh, and it did kind of like jump. Its main its main like maneuver was it jumps in the air and just kind of like somersaults at people. <coughs> so I guess that could be a thing. That'd be really funny if um if the if the sword was attached to this dog's tail it was it would be the only po- and it was the only pokemon that would be programmed to actually do damage with tail whip. <laughs> but then we have to do like the whole pokemon accessory expansion and then everybody gets <laughs> to wear clothes. It'll be great. Um so within this within this um, holding things in the mouth section, there's another dog in another video game. Uh, I don't know how well known it is, but in the Tales series, there is a character called Repede. This dog has a nice has a cool little dagger strapped to his side, and I actually really like how and a they... smoking problem. Well. There's uh, apparently it doesn't actually smoke from that thing. That that pipe's just kind of a uh, uh, an artifact left over from its previous master type of a thing. Uh, it's a poser. <laughs> um, yes. So uh, this is Sorry, one. This is one design where I actually really like how they stored the the sword on it because it actually does look relatively. Um, I'm. I hesitate to say realistic, but I'm flubbing on my words right now. Um, it's. Yeah, you can put it there. Realistic in the sense of like it could actually like reach over, grab it, and being a dagger-ish sort of size. It's not like it's un. It's it's not it's not out of the realm of reality that it could actually like unsheathe that blade. Yeah, it could entirely. Like, kind of take it out, flop it about, and have, break its teeth on it. <laughs> but you forget. That's you... just going to fall forward. <laughs> Stupid. Well, if you remember your, um, if you remember the daggers that you had, you know, they had that, that little thick bit that made it, like, like you had to really kind of, like, smack it really hard in order for that thing to fall out of the sheath. So I want to could... see how this pup's puts it back in that's also very true there are a lot of there are a lot of instances in which it's like oh yeah it's really easy to pull that out but how do you put it back in um Uh, problems for the ages i also don't i've seen i've never actually played this particular game before but i've seen um images of this thing in action and it's you know it's pretty standard for um, dog with sword in its mouth, but I don't remember where it puts the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just lives there. It like swallows it, and then just like it just stays like that forever <laughs> inside its gullet, and then it vomits it back up like nasty dogs do, because dogs are gross. That's how I want. That's my head cannon for it. What do you think the training regimen is for these dogs that use swords in battle? Uh, I 
I want to say, I want to say they look at the uh, the litter of puppies and they put a thing in each of their mouths and then they run around and see which puppy is that dumb puppy that walks with it still <laughs> and carries it. And then like, you shall be the warrior. And then they put it in its mouth and they tie the thing shut for a while. And then they just have that dog waggle it, uh, waggle around. They just kind of, uh, and the one that doesn't end up stabbing uh, itself gets to move on to stage three. <laughs> the calcium buildup. Yeah. Um, then they they replace its uh, its teeth. Um, uh, and I don't know. And they get a diploma, which they have to walk with the diploma in their mouth. I don't remember no. what it was, but they get was. a diploma and they try to hand it to the dog, but the dog does not open its mouth because it already has a knife in it. And if it opens its mouth for the diploma, you it goes, "You're a bad dog," <laughs> and you fail. <laughs> the dog walks away in shame, and those that keep the blade uh, are the only ones that graduate because they don't need you to tell them that they're a good boy because they know they're a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, who are you to tell me I'm a good boy? I'm the one with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You're the good boy. <laughs> <laughs> My drawing looks like a llama. I like it. I want to see llamas. I want to see weaponized llamas. The samurai llama. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That is like animals are they're weird, man. I don't like it, it doesn't I don't see it working. It seems easier that they should have like those uh that like body harness thing. Like the, that, the like the service that, dogs? Yeah. Uh that like or those like costume ones where they have like look like sharks, right? Uh huh. <laughs> and they just run by things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just run by things and kill them. <laughs> and all the trainers just go like, "Go give him love!" And it goes <laughs> and it runs up and it like jumps on things. Uh, and everybody it passes gets cut. Can you do me a favor and just give it like Labrador ears? <laughs> what is? It's just like sure. a floppy. We'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are Labrador ears? Yeah. Good boy. <laughs> so good. Oh, so much lipstick. You just <laughs> ate all the poop. There we go. Good puppy. Wag that tail. Yeah. All right. I could. I could see that. I could see that work. See, I mean, I'd be down because then it like it can't like reach those things. Nobody. Nobody but the enemies, and then maybe you. But I don't know. I'll give it like a nice spot. And it can. Uh, it can cause death that way. <laughs> because like real talk though. These things got to have trainers. I don't envision them, like, taking out their own things. I imagine somebody strapping stuff to it. That it's right, well, somebody is the dog handlers. Uh, ooh, you get to be the dog armor. <laughs> well, here's, here's an example of a non-trained, but they're, they're, they're more, th this character was given to it more of a divine right sort of thing. We're talking about Okami. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so now we've got um and it's a sort of different thing so storage wise the sword just kind of floats on the back but it's still the same thing in which when it's used um there's there are certain animations in which the sword's actually in the mouth but there's other animations in which it just kind of floats in front of like the the nose area and just kind of like is of the will of um Amaterasu. So uh 
I kind of like this concept in the sense that it doesn't try to do the whole thing of like, well, how strong are its teeth? Or like, how do the neck muscles work? It's still kind of, and it does still try to do the whole like, well, how does a dog move with a, you know, <laughs> with a blade? So at least it, it, you know, it still stays in line with that. But um, because it's sort of its own entity in front of your character, they are able to do a lot more with it than just have it be this like well it's clenched between his teeth so it can really only function on one plane of existence you know and then how what well, you know what can we work with that this way it can you know it has all sorts of maneuverability even though it does kind of throw out the whole like <laughs> you know but we're talking about animals with weapons so how realistic can we get really <laughs> I don't know. So a story that Tyler knows, but you out there in internet land don't really know, is that I had a cat, and she was crazy. Very crazy. Uh, and sh she would get super excited anytime I would do martial arts stuff, and I'd be training with weapons. She would roll around and want to play with me because I had weapons. She had issues, uh, amongst other things. Um, but like one day, we were throwing knives in the backyard, and then the knife goes missing, and we don't know where it is, um, where it's at. And uh, eventually, we go into the house, and we're like, "Whatever, a life, uh, a knife lost. Somebody's gonna step on it later, and we'll just deal with that then." Um, <clears throat> but then, cat comes inside when we're like just hanging out, uh, and it is holding the knife in its mouth, just happy as a clam. So, some animals do get. <laughs> do get weapons and do hold them and it's weird and she she kind of she had some issues like we were kind of scared because she has definitely ran at she's one of those cats that like you love but if you catch it at the wrong moment it will run out and attack you yeah and if you've ever seen a cat walk into your house like not just like haha i got this thing and i'm gonna go like under the i'm gonna go under the bed and i'm just gonna like chew on it for a while if you ever had a cat that came into your house with a thing in its mouth and like i'm proud everybody look at me with that kind of like little like jump step thing that's what that cat was doing with this dagger like hey everybody look i'm the queen now because i have the weapon yeah <laughs> it was it was she was she was ready she was ready to win we had to we had to coax it out of her with uh, hot Cheetos is what she likes. So she got some hot Cheetos that day. We got That's a knife right. back and most of us got to keep all of our blood in our body. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, but, but let's not forget little where, let's not forget where this game character learned how to use the sword, remembered how to use the sword. I think the story was that he was reincarnated and thus forgot everything that his previous in, in, incarnation knew. So we had this little tiny mouse guy. <laughs> Who, I don't know if you can really see it in that representation, but there's a very small, uh, what's it called, sheath there that uh, somehow it pulled out this gigantic sword out of, <laughs> let alone the fact that this god mouse is able to clench this. Uh. Gods. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only that's the only excuse is that you know gods what are you gonna do man uh, yeah i mean at least they're they're giving taking animal forms and wielding weapons you know they could be on the whole rape fest that is that's a usual for many gods to take on animal forms to decide to like sneak into people's houses and then have that with the with them so how scared guess would you that? be of a mouse that came up to you with a weapon that big Mm, not scared. That's not my reaction usually to stress. Mine is uh, to get sarcastic and laugh, uh, usually. <laughs> uh, I would probably die because I would be laughing and I'd fall on the floor getting that much closer to its dangerous bits. Okay, so <clears throat> two Okay, so two phases in this scenario, right? So there's this mouse, right? And it's mm -hmm. kind of like New York pizza ratting at this gigantic or this, I guess, normal-sized sword. You know, it's kind of just like struggling. It's like dragging it. What's your What's your reaction to that scene? 
I just, I can't, I can't. I would laugh and I would assume in my own sense of ego that I have been given a quest and the gods have given me this sword. Uh, but I probably would come forward and be like, hey, rat, do you need some help <laughs> carrying that? And then scenario two, at this point, <laughs> at this point, the mouse suddenly lifts lifts up the sword with relative ease jumps <laughs> jumps into the jumps into the air and does all these acrobatic somersaults and you realize it's about to attack you <laughs> and that's probably where i die because i freeze <laughs> in laughter <laughs> at the absurdity of this whole thing and i have that last moment of like mm, yes this is how i go it was delicious and so in that, and that should be put on. I'm sorry. Should that should be put, put on, on my uh, on my tombstone. On your tombstone. I was killed by a laugh uh, by laughing at Rat God. I imagine your tombstone will say that, except it'll be like also like slightly cleaved in half. <laughs> yeah, sure. I like that because <laughs> not only your body but your tombstone was cle was cleaved in twain. Um, but on that note Dirty of absurdity. Rat. There is yet a third... Well, I mean, there's a bunch of absurd characters within this game, and that makes it one of my top five games to just kind of sit down and chill with. But one of the more, I would argue, uh, comedical gods within this thing is the Bakugami. The poor, the poor boar with his four sons. Or I guess they're just offspring in general. Piggly Wigglies. Uh, so... I throw this in there, not because it doesn't hold it necessarily, but it still generally uses a, an item that's usually man-made. Uh, rolling around on it like a circus ball or a circus animal. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> and initially I was like, man, like I was looking at the original concept of this and I was like, man, like it's weird, but I don't remember how he lights that bomb at all. And then, it was made so clear to me that he's not the one that lights it. <laughs> it's, it's, That's the flame one. It's, it's, his, it's, yeah. his, it's his butthole children that run around and try to light the bomb on fire. <laughs> yeah. I, what a weird, weird setup. I don't know. I wonder what, like, the, the indoctrination goes with those animals to, like, try to convince them, like, you know what, child? I birthed you for this reason. You may die, but no, it's for the greater good of killing a dog that's been turned into a wolf or this wolf god thing, you know, whatever. I have issues with it, but you, you are my chosen. A lot of times the story that I'm, or the setup that I'm used to is um, usually a mundane creature tries to mess around with something that's kind of out of their, out of their limit. Um, thereby pissing off a uh, god that's higher up, and then they say, okay, so you made a mistake, now your punishment is you're constantly trying to keep this thing away from your children who are buttholes. <laughs> so, <laughs> good luck with the rest of your existence. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, okay, so, like, so... There's item A, I guess, right? Of holding it in different ways uh, instead of the whole mouth biz. Um, and not being strapped on, but like a conscious, like, hey, I'm going to fucking do this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is that how you'd want it? Like them kind of like a, a treadmilling death on it? I think that's an interesting, I think that's an interesting way to weaponize an animal is just to have something hamster wheel at <laughs> at at people <laughs> <laughs> hamster wheel death that's a good one what um because i mean it, it falls into it falls into what the animal naturally does which is run forward right i mean granted for this for this bomb the sphere to work it technically has to run backwards mm -hmm. so that's not that's not as um doable in a lot of scenarios but it's still a it's still a basic action a function of um moving whereas um you know holding something <laughs> holding something in your mouth 
could be uh, the normal action of play, which we, you know, we see a lot of the animals that do kind of weaponize their mouths in such a way do, but um, then you have the whole thing of like, you know, how strong do the neck muscles have to be and how heavy is the thing that they're holding? What's the size of it? <laughs> and all that stuff. With this, with what? this, with the boar bomb example, you know, my mind doesn't have to do as much interpretation. It just kind of accepts it and it's a lot more and it kind of lets me kind of enjoy the comedy of it a lot more. I guess so. But like, really, given the bits of the boar that I think are dangerous, that boars generally do, it's those things. These mean pointy bits. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But the babies don't have those yet. But they're just running around with fire anyways. <laughs> yeah. But the, bo the the adult's not exactly trying to use the bomb. It's just trying to keep the bomb away from his ch the children. Well, then by extension, ends up using the bomb once the bomb is eventually lit. So it's just kind of an unfortunate side effect <laughs> of his position. Games are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> That was like a horrible, horrible torture. It like, so, like, what is that? Uh, the saw guy clown was like, "Hey, you want to play a game? You're gonna run around on this, uh, on this bomb. You're gonna attack a wolf if it comes by. And here's your children. And some your children have fire on them. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Only one of your children is an asshole." <laughs> Well, I mean, that's just a fact. That's a, like that's how it goes. <laughs> There's a lot of studies about that. <laughs> Yeesh. <laughs> no, <I'm trying> to... <laughs> um, would it be? <clears throat> hmm. I'm trying to think of. Would it be more interesting if the children held the bomb and the adult had had the had the torch? Would that make any difference in um, in opinion? If the children held held the bomb, so yeah, like if adult. they just if they just kind of like um, what do they call those things? A not a pagoda, um, whatever you know. If they if they just kind of if they kind of held it, you know, so that they ran in to place the bomb, and then the adult kind of runs through to light it, and then they all sort of scatter. <laughs> Do you think that would change the dynamic? The dynamic of the design? Yeah, I mean, I guess it would be less ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I think designers have, like, terrible, terrible jobs sometimes to, like, make interesting things uh, happen. But I don't know. I think if it was, like, a horrible game of soccer um, and... Uh, that was like pitched uh, to them was like yeah you just have to get this to the goal and the goal is that thing and then Papa Papa Pig you just have these two candles that are going to stick on your uh, uh, on your horns and you just got to run up and touch it and then run away and it's like yeah sure we could do that like, would it be um, would it be uh, I, I would imagine that it would be more like that would be a more serious take on it. So this method kind of gives some some comedy to the scene, whereas the other way would be more serious, more almost horror like like you like I would almost see the, the boar with um, with flames on its tusks in more of like a Dark Souls type scenario where you have a bunch of minions running around and you have to try to like keep an eye on where they are. And then, you know, this this big boar is trying to run you down and or also lighting the bombs around you. So you got to watch out for all these things. So it turns into a hack and slash to a bullet rut or a bullet hell almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I'd play that the Dark Souls game. That sounds horrible. Again, <laughs> another world full of like, who put this weapon on this guy? Well, that, that sounds to me like it fits appropriately. Dark Souls team, get on it. 
<laughs> Dark Souls 5. Animals covered in weapons. Jeez. Well, they've already got rotting animals. Big rats that come out of the mist spontaneously. Not spontaneously, but just sudden rat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's move away know. from the video game form. I think Tales of Vesperia is also just a straight up anime also, now that I think about it. But again, I haven't invested a lot of time. <laughs> let's move on to movies. So one of the other things that kind of spawned or um, kind of spurred this topic on for me was I recently watched um, the Penguins of Madagascar and one of the titular um, antagonist in this one is um, Dr. Octavius Brine. Chucky all grown up? Well, <laughs> almost until you find out that he's actually a purple octopus. <laughs> okay. Oh man. So, Eight arms and no hands. And th that okay. was the, and, yeah, and so that was the coolest concept to me that this you know, that this octopus could actually like take on, you know, mimic because uh mimic a human in like skin color and pallor and all this stuff the eyebrows and all this stuff because you've seen a bunch of nature documentaries in which these octopi go up to like rocks and stuff and then just become another rock and mm -hmm. it almost kind of scares me a little bit that it's just like man if i was a fish i'd i'd probably hyperventilate to death <laughs> just the stress of like there there are bigger fish than me that look like rocks there are weird multi-armed monsters that look like rocks everything looks like rocks and if i go too far to the surface there's claw gods that try to pluck me out of my home and eat me so i throw him in there because yes as you can see he is an octopus um and but if you look closely at the at his human representation at his human disguise uh, counting the fingers, he has all ten digits. And mm -hmm. when, initially, when I was doing this, I was hoping to throw up this image and count the fingers and not see the correct number of digits. But then I was surprised to see that he did have the correct number of digits. So I was like, "Huh, uh, where does he get the extra two digits from?" <laughs> well, okay, so. You can move your hand about, but like really, your pin, uh, your like your middle finger and ring finger, they kind of like like to go together. It hurts. It hurts a lot trying to separate them uh, most of the time. So I think if you just like you know you control one of them and then you just have like a doodly bob to hang out next to the other, <laughs> it'll work pretty well. I or the other. Are, I mean, I think that's... there are a couple scenes where he like makes a gesture and like his like ring finger or something just kind of flops there. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I was just surprised to see that they didn't do the um, the Disney cheatsies where they just kind of get rid of a digit. <laughs> so, where's nah, the there it is. Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> wow, that looks really weird at this angle. If humans only had four digits, you, I don't like it even. Tell me to stop. <laughs> no, go further. <laughs> Chop your finger off on live interwebs. Um, what's your opinion on um, animated and or cartoon cephalopods with non-beak faces? <laughs> That one's like, I don't know. That one's weird. Weird that they get bits, but I guess that's how the cartoon goes. Like, how much more nasty would that thing be if it was, you know, as it should be with, like, ugh. It would I mean, be a lot, it would be a lot so harder mad. to represent who's talking because for the longest time, you know, I don't think the audience would see unless they make the entire octopus's body like jiggle or something whenever he talks um i don't think the audience would really know because his minions his minions don't have um what's that called posterior faces i don't know if the octopus if the octopus what is... faces what are you, what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> 
it's not really ex I guess they're all exterior what do you call that when it's just underneath I don't know exterior. but I like butt faces let's go with that <laughs> the butt face um yeah I mean it's to me it's one of those things where it's just like you know, from the classes that I've taken, it's like there's, you know, there's that little part, of, there's that little, there's that little person in the, in the, that gets up from his seat in my mind and goes, um, actually, and then just kind of sits down and just like, eh. <laughs> like, I'll acknowledge that that's not correct, but I'm going to continue watching anyway with a smile on my face. Because <laughs> um, the same thing goes with a lot of um, Don Bluth characters in which, like, there's characters with beaks where they just suddenly spawn teeth. And you know that's always kind of like a <laughs> whatever. It gives it gives the character kind of more character. Oddly, it's weird how teeth can be a character defining feature. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think if you were like, hey, do you remember Jim? Like which Jim? You know, blonde Jim or no teeth Jim? Yeah, no teeth Jim. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it it's because when I um. Like in The Secret of Nim, right? So the crow Jeremy, I don't feel like he needed teeth, but there are instances in which he um, he does certain expressions and there is that smile that comes through and you're just like, whoa, like I don't, like it didn't, it, mm. it didn't need it, but it did further yeah, well, it did that something. expression. <laughs> it, it did do something, yeah. Yeah, give people nightmares. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he didn't really, so beyond his gloves, he did hold other objects, uh, Dave, where he had this little control box thing. And, you know, I mean, it's not the, the control, it's the control box itself wasn't exactly meant for an octopus, but there he is holding it. Um, but I think things with tentacles tend to cheat a lot as far as this topic goes. Cause... Yeah, except for like, really, I don't think I've seen very many uh, octopi or octivities or squidulars, uh, like <laughs> lift things. Like water is awesome in the fact that it wants to lift stuff in general. Like they are weak, nasty, squishy bits that just like flop on the ground that cannot lift things. Like, so if it's there, yeah, it exists. They can noodle around it, but there is where it will live yeah i think a lot of what we see like when they pry open a jar or something is just like leverage <laughs> they just use mm -hmm. <sighs> um and that's just twisting again it's not like a lifting uh i mean there are instances well but you know it's also their entire body but there are instances in which they like get themselves into a crevice and then they just sort of like expand <laughs> and just open it up that way <laughs> um, like, and I'm scared of it. What, like, uh, uh, going back to that like rat scenario? Except now, an octopus come down, uh, comes through an alley, or you go to an alley and you see this large sword, and you're like, man, that's a large ass sword. And all of a sudden, an expansion happens under it, and like, it, it blows this into your area, like some sort of evil whoopee cushion. Uh, what do you do? <laughs> Can I roll for dexterity save? <laughs> <laughs> no, you die. <laughs> All right, and then let's move. So that's Dave. Um, Bye, Dave. What about guns and tendrils and tentacles? Do you think? I think it could. I think an octopus could actually actually handle a gun they'd get it with their whole body and like twist it and point it's like all those, kinda... it's like all those images out there with like crabs holding knives and just like yeah now what except now it's like octopus with a gun just like give me all your give me all your shrimp <laughs> give me your shrimp that's the highest <laughs> well i guess the other the other version of it could be now you're the one who needs to open the jar <laughs> Uh, what are some other Guns. weird things that you wouldn't expect to see an octopus hold and or manipulate? <laughs> um, 
uh, my emotions, um, babies. <laughs> uh, I think that would be kind of weird. Um, all right, a Rubik's cube. I think that would be a weird one. Uh, <laughs> you know, what I just realized is that in this close-up of him like pushing or threatening to push the button. His quote unquote teeth are actually all connected, so that could actually be considered a really gross, jaggedy beak. Yeah, um, except for its bits aren't coming from the right spot around it. <laughs> well, we'll just kind of ignore that for a minute. <laughs> you know what? Oh, you know what his teeth look like? They look like sun chips. Mm. Like he's got like two really gross, really wide sun chips for teeth. <laughs> Ruffles. I can see I'm that. hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hungry. I thought you had lunch. I can still be hungry. Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> You're the smallest fat person I ever knew. Um, Let's see. I don't know. I, mean, I think there's a lot of starving people out there. <laughs> Runners. Uh, we're off topic again. <laughs> what were we talking about? Weird things we're that are talking uh, about awkward. moving into a to into a subject matter that. Um, I have a little more ire towards, but I also have no position in which to stand with that ire. So, for mm -hmm. example, um, we have one piece, we have one pieces, uh, I believe it's written as Z-O-L-L-O. But I believe everyone pronounces it as Zorro, with Z O single R O, not to be confused with the Spanish Z O R R O, which is an amazing swordsman of black mask fame. Mm -hmm. Or that one weird one where it was his cousin and he was using a whip and was dressed up like a fruit salad. Uh... I don't remember at all <laughs> <laughs> good good times good times <laughs> what kind of what kind of weird ass james bond thing were you watching the best um, kind the delicious <laughs> kinds the, the only kind so yeah. um i have no, I have no right, right to really right. talk smack on this genre of anime but my biggest issue is the fact that he has he already has two swords, which is a, is a really effective like style already, but decides to put a third equal size sword in his mouth. And I don't know the multiple times that I've seen people try to do it. Um, it's not the fact that you put swords in their mouth. At, well, at least try to mimic this dude, at the very least is um not the fact that your your motions are quite limited in like what you can do with your neck and having a thing in your mouth but the fact that usually the sword in your left hand in the event that you have it going out the same direction as the image on screen mm -hmm. is the sword in your left hand will almost all the time hit that sword so you're kind mm -hmm. of you're kind of your own enemy also unless you limit the range of mo of motion that your left arm can do which is again just another detractor so i don't understand why you would do that to yourself because um... <laughs> that that anime is just extra i think <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's about all. So I did try to find some justification as to why, as to when he uses that stance, but um, the only time that I saw that it was actually utilized was when he, uh, the, or the, at least the only one that stuck in my mind was when he was fighting like the sea dragon thing, and he basically just like spun at it, so he just became this Beyblade of Death. And I was like, all right, I, I can I can kind of accept that type of um, depiction of this thing. But then usually when he went one on one with someone, um, he usually only defeated them with one sword. <laughs> so it was like, all right, I mean, could use both. But, you know, then I do believe 
he's and i gotta those, clean all of them i believe he's one of those characters that does have like the you know that was just my first technique and now i have now you're a little stronger than that technique can allow so i'm gonna use both swords to kill you and that oh you're like the ultimate bad guy so i'm gonna use all three of them to kill you but those instances are few and far between and one piece is i believe in their like thousandth episode or something like that and so for that reason i and this is why i have no real standing to really say shit about this but i'm a human being so i'm going to vomit out what i vomit out and um America. i refuse to watch <laughs> yeah so i refuse to watch one piece for that reason that it's in its thousandth episode <laughs> yeah. um or at least somewhere near a thousand. It's I don't. It's weird. I don't know why it's all that important to that. I don't know. I guess it's always that, that thing that like I'm special. I'm the most special and unique snowflake. Uh, that that they're just trying to come up with like a cool ass way for somebody to do something different. Uh, so I will I say that know. in the. That bad? I will say, though, that in the menagerie of characters that do exist within the One Piece universe, um, this guy is actually relatively down-to-earth as far as design goes. Um, and there is a part of me that will admit that it is eye candy to like see. Like, there is sort of an aesthetically pleasing thing to see, you know to see this design the way the way it is <laughs> i don't know i think a more like uh proper design of something that could work is if like he just had something that was like small and pointy on both sides <laughs> that's very true uh wasn't that a wasn't that a thing in um and then he can have his like swords over here or that was a thing in Ninja uh, Scroll. Um, maybe. But on the fact it. of short and pointy oh. things and more efficient uses of it. So I feel that if you're going to do something, if you're going to try to depict a stance like this that are as outlandish as this, then you should go all out. And what I'm talking about is in Naruto, where we have Killer B. <laughs> Now this guy, I feel like he takes he takes the original or the the first design, and just takes it up to to another degree. So not only does he have he have three, he has eight of these short swords, and has a very unique way of doing that. And I would like to credit the animators for actually going through and doing a butt ton of scenes to actually individually like show how he uses these things now granted i'm sure that there's a lot of little shortcuts that the animators took to do this scene mm -hmm. in particular but at least there's a satisfaction to me when i see the swords used in this manner whereas um in the scenes that i kind of reviewed on to kind of f remember who this zoro character is um it was very like it was very like I'm gonna declare my attack, see the character rush toward the thing, and then um, scene like it was like a cut, like um, just like a cut, and then or scene cut, and then it was just like samurai, you know, the classic samurai slash thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just Step kind of like apart. still, and then one person falls over type of a thing. Yeah, Whereas this this plays to this plays to all of my all of my like aesthetically pleasing senses it's the only sense that this is playing to me right now is thinking how sweaty and nasty each of those handles are <laughs> like just tucked between the bits well, it's just ugh. true but i don't know you and i have fenced <laughs> and practiced uh fenced each other fenced old, uh, other people and like your wrist gets so sore <laughs> after just like blocking stuff like once or twice like and yes these are supposed to be masters but i don't know i don't know it's just like was it all that purposeful is it all that helpful 
is it easier to For build up one? the grip strength at the back of your knee than it is within your hand? Like, no, pointless. You know what's funny is that preceding this scene, I believe, um, uh, I believe Naruto and like a group of people that are trying to be like, well, you know, where is this? Where is this person? Um, they are actually ha I there is an interview with um, the head of their village and who's the brother of this guy, the older brother of Killer B. And even he says that he's like, oh, yeah, you know, he went off into the mountains to like go and train and practice his like his silly, his, his silly style. And then it cuts to this scene where um, we have Sasuke approaching these guys and is like, hey, we, we got to knock you out and take you in to kind of extract something that's inside you. And he's like, uh, no. And then this happens. So we get this we get this prefix of like um, of his brother and this really silly style. And then we get an immediate example of what this style is that he's been practicing for like 20 something years or something. But to the note on you saying that all those little things should be really like sweaty. You remember the Shinai that we were using and just just using two hands on those things like those things got yeah like they got really gross really fast so i would imagine yeah. that and if this was tucked in like uh could you imagine like to take it back to the beginning dog breath swords oh <laughs> man those sheets like i would hate to be the like the the blacksmith that you get it back and like this dog comes in and rah, 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 i'm like oh man i got to rah, 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 and you're like oh, okay i guess i'll sharpen it <laughs> oh man Ew. dude you see that dog ever. it totally cut me in my thigh yeah man you're bleeding and i think you have heartworms <laughs> <laughs> i don't know see the, the thing is you misread that 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 scene where they're like yeah him and his silly style this is still a silly style like they totally acknowledge that he kicks ass but they're just like he just looks like an idiot while doing it <laughs> He should die of embarrassment, but he hasn't. We don't understand why. I mean, it's 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 good. It's like a so, and to bring this into like the realm of actual uh, actual shit, um, the like granny basketball shot where you like stand <laughs> and you shoot with the ball between your legs, um, and you just toss it up. Oh, that looks weird. It looks like it's urinating. <laughs> but it throws the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Could be dumping and then it, out like, a ball of water. Uh-huh. Uh, they <laughs> sure. tend to go, like, the success rate of shooting free throws in this granny style is actually higher than shooting in the conventional way. Like, studies have shown. There has been, like, two, I want to say, um, professional basketball players that have used this style uh, to shoot free throws, and they they are of like the highest like free throw like um, success rates. Huh. But nobody does it because it's dumb. <laughs> you shouldn't do it. Don't be dumb. Don't look dumb. It also Puppies, has very, it get also has pets, very, don't carry weapons. It also has very low mobility, and a defender could easily just come over and just be like. My well, in, so in your face. <laughs> yeah, the, that those were specifically for free throws. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. When everyone's just standing around and going <laughs> like, "Oh man, look at him, he's dumb." Do you remember once upon a time when we were fighting in a park and um, you cut out for a second? Dang it! Uh, do you remember once upon a time when we were fighting in a park and um, we were fighting a dude named Roger? Yeah. So he, I don't know if you remember, but there was one day in which he decided to flip, he decided to flip his bokken around and use all these little moves that we had previously written off as like, those either don't work or they're like, they're like, um, for this, they're like for the stage. And he started <laughs> wrecking all of our, he started wrecking our faces with it. This is the sense of novelty. <laughs> of different uh, of different angles yes um yeah. i don't remember full wrecking but i remember that it was quicker than most people yeah it was just it just caught me off guard and i feel like that's the satisfaction that that he that this character's feeling right now it's like after all this stuff you know everyone's all you know so used to this like super formal way of fighting and then there's just all these different angles that they're being attacked at at multiple times 
but what I want to go to right now is um, more of the design and animators sort of section to it. Like, whenever I see a scene like this in which there's this unrealistic method of fighting, like, I can't imagine sitting down with, like, all these blank frames and having your director over your shoulder and go, okay, so here's the basic concept that we need. Can you make this fight scene happen? But one of them is wielding eight swords. <laughs> like I can't, I cannot imagine the mental stress of that one like storyboard artist that sits down and goes, okay, how is he using eight swords? <laughs> Because like in the well, in, you know in the manga you can kind of you can sort of jump around you know panels and stuff like that but once you sit down and have to animate each frame then I feel like the stress like jumps up exponentially. Well, I mean, if you look at these, if we're gonna talk realistically, um, but yes, it would give me a heart attack if somebody asked me to do this. But <laughs> he's pretty much doing like if we want to say Capoeira esque stuff. He's just punching and kicking, standing on his hands every once in a while. And then the animator, all he did was put like spinny triangles every once in a while, every couple of frames uh, around those areas to make it look like somehow he is wielding this with his foot. That's true. But just the, the, the but also like the decision to like, like, does he, does he throw it up there? Is there a reason, you know, is there like a, is there another sword transfer that needs to happen that makes him have to throw his current sword up into the air in order to catch it later or something like that? That would drive me insane. <laughs> yeah, though, I wonder, I wonder how much or how convenient it would be to like go talk to a juggler, like, and uh, be like, hey, juggler, you have strange juggler dreams. What would you like to do if you could juggle anything? I wonder oh. if they did do any research like that, like if they actually did make some phone calls and it's like, hey, so we hear that you run this, you know, this juggling or this clown college, I guess, or a juggling academy. Um, <laughs> is there, are there any pointers that you can kind of help us as far as like how juggle <laughs> the physics of how juggling works? Man, this is bringing. Yeah, this... No, that's what I would talk to. <laughs> I would talk to crazy people uh, with their crazy jobs and see what kind of dreams that they had. This is bringing back like existential nightmares of when I was trying to animate this little um, intro that I was doing, and the the craziest question that cr that crossed my mind that set me into an existential dread for about like a half a day was, how does wood crack? <laughs> it's just like, oh my god, I have to like I have to sit down for a minute. <laughs> That's weird. The things that like break a person. But I don't know. Goodness. I mean, yeah, but slobber this, puffs. But I have, yeah. So I, I really appreciate, like, regardless of how silly it is, whenever something's done to like at the very like to this general degree, I have, I have some level of appreciation for it, and I will always accept. Um. So let's move away from the ridiculous and let's go into more. Let's go into more kind of calm water, shall we? So in a film, Neko no Ongaishi, otherwise known as The Cat Returns, by animated by Studio Studio Studio, Studio. Ghibli. I like that. That's canon now. <laughs> studio yeah um so we have a bunch of cats and as we can see right. that in their kind of basic sort of resting sort of state they have like they're depicted as having normal sort of paw stuff in the background you can see one of them is operating an accordion which again kind of falls into what their paw anatomy can do you just kind of strap those things in and they just you know in, uh, fill the lungs depress the lungs increase the lungs depress the lungs and it's like all right cool uh, spears and swords in the background, but you can't really see that. So I've provided a image of this cute little brown flop-eared cat. Is there a name for those cats? Uh, disgustings. Oh, I think they're cute. Anyways, mm. so nope, not that one. They look. They remind me of those like uh uh like Chinese foot binding, uh, like. But with the ears? Oh no, with the way that their paws are kind of just hanging. Yeah. Everything. 
I do like, however, if we if you take a closer look at the at the at the little brown cat. Yeah, I guess that's brown. <laughs> Some shade of brown. Um, they actually do kind of go through where the um, where the ball of the foot kind of is, and then this little sort of lump where it kind of goes into the rest of like the um, the foot, and then like the quote unquote wrist. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, we see that same cat kind of relatively leaning on, but I would I would argue gripping the um, bars of the fence over here. Yeah. So when they're when the cats in this art style need to kind of grip something, they just kind of <laughs> they just kind of curl <laughs> curl over it. Um, the main character, you know, he's got he's got gloves, so he kind of does the Mickey Mouse thing, where if they really need like finite detail in what they're gripping, or if they need like pointing or mm -hmm. something, then they'll shove a glove on it <laughs> or something. Um, whereas all the background characters just kind of do general actions and I don't know in my opinion in my in my novice opinion I think that's perfectly acceptable I don't need everything to have like super fine details why does this cat need, have gloves and have actual finger digits and all these other cats just kind of kind of mold over stuff like I, I don't I don't feel that way <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You don't feel disadvantaged? Sad that there's a new breed of cat that's better than you? <laughs> no, but also now that I think about it, the main protagonist cat is um, technically a statue. So he's not yeah, an that's true. cat. And all the other cats are actual cats. So uh, I just now remembered that fact so i guess that's a really big factor as to why there's a design difference beyond mm -hmm. the fact that they use the main cat more than all these kind of tertiary cats um, which is another which is another point to bring up is that if a character is kind of background and tertiary like do you need to put that much design into what they do uh, no shorthand Longhand, like, yes, you want some things. I, I guess it always comes down to, do you have time and money to do it? Do you have a couple extra interns to, like, make stuff? Because, like, in this scene in particular, um, the cat's kind of, you know, the cat's kind of leaning forward. But the the main thing here is not, or the, the main um, focus here is not exactly what's going on with their hands, but it's, you know, facial expressions, what the conversation's happening. You know, I think her hands never really um, leave her knees, and then the cat never really goes too far between. Besides, um, paws at his sides or paws against the great the fence grate. Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess it's. Um, it's the... like that. Dr it's really it's just the dream logic of like you. Uh, you kind of have to go by. Or I'd imagine, like, uh, what do you, what is, uh, what's the most important for this, for this moment? What tells the story? What has that, uh, what adds to the story? And then everything that doesn't tell the story, that doesn't, you know, when I, uh, like, in a dream, like, do you have a car when you don't need a car? Not so often, but that moment that you need a car, the car's there, and it's ready, and it's important. So when I ha need fingers, I have fingers. When I need to stand on two legs, I have two legs. When I need to sit down, sometimes I just don't have legs. I don't know. That's a fact. Don't look at that. Uh, don't look that up. <laughs> so it's so it's what the it's what the scene it's it's a difference between what the scene demands and then what the scene like is you know what would be nice to have in the scene. Yeah, and I guess it, part of it comes down to uh, I. Uh, your audience and what do you want your audience to see if you want your audience to see the background then put information in there in the background that's important for them to see if you don't want to see it uh, if you don't want them to see things in the background don't put anything that would draw their attention because i've seen other i've seen other um animes and even american films that um you know the audience would praise um little background details where it was for you know like 
you know someone someone would have like a like you know their cross arms and waiting at a bus station in the background but they're still like tapping their you know they're still tapping their finger on their arm or they're you know they're doing something in the background you know they're obviously a tertiary character but there's still you know a, a, an immense amount of detail given to them to kind of give life to the background that's happening so yeah but um, I, I guess that that still in my mind comes down to do uh what it, you what's your goal in this scene do you want the audience to appreciate the entire scene to have a sense of realism or is it important that that they look at the facial features of what's happening between you know uh the two main characters yeah so is that do you think that's a um you, a studio decision or like the the current artist decision as far as like what um what gets detail and what doesn't get detail oh uh, it's a combination of it both i think whenever you're hired to do any sort of job um you're hired somewhat with the expectation that you that you will make creative decisions, that you will make the right decisions for the moment, that you're going to take off some of the, the stress of your supervisor to have to check in with whatever you're doing. So if you can make that creative decision of like, okay, I'm going to put this amount of detail in the background, or I'm going to articulate fingers in this scene, uh, then your boss doesn't have to see that. But I'm sure that there, but there, there's meetings where you talk about, you know, like what is, Kind of what's the goal and then you you know you test but hopefully you the the artist or designer has has made a lot of those decisions for you so you don't even have to think about it uh for you if you were doing so in this in this um back garden conversation scene if you were if you were if you had some uh, part in the creation of this like still Mm -hmm. uh, let's replace the cat with something that generally does have more of a digit sort of thing. Like, um, I don't know, let's say, let's say some bird, some bird has like feather fingers or something. Um, being such a close scene, right? So it's not, it's not a wide shot where there's like a bunch of background scenery, right? So the focus is these two characters. Um, would you prioritize what the like what the hands are doing or would you just kind of do the same general thing where it's like i'm gonna have him grip you know i'm just gonna have him grip and lean forward and then that's just kind of where it's going to be until the body language changes or would you uh, decide something would you go in a different direction altogether <laughs> no i think part of this is that uh this scene and given her face uh it's about the uh the breaking expectation but the expectation isn't necessarily the body language of the cat uh it's the fact that it's talking <laughs> <laughs> so i would add little things um well, i would have it lean on it so it would be a little bit more realistic but a little bit strange like if i think about um uh about like there's the bar and then there's the girl and uh whoop Thing went out of it. <laughs> One moment, we got some technical difficulties. Yeah, drawing quicker than my my program wants to go. But I would. Uh, there we go. Go in the thing. There it goes. <laughs> and we're back. Okay. Uh, well, we have like her face, and she's just surprised uh and looking at uh at this like bird thing like if it wasn't like a cat uh hanging up uh by this like fence what i would do is i would have the bird like it's mostly the squawk of it talking oh yeah with its underbite i love that <laughs> um but of the wings like actual uh bird wing and anatomy is like where the feathers are are just like really elongated fingers and i wouldn't curve the fingers there but i would have that thing where it's resting uh resting this nodule i guess against it hmm. and the uh wings are are splayed out so it's not impossible that it could be could be like leaning up against this this thing having this conversation with the girl but what's most important is 
the fact that they are making eye contact and that the mouth is doing something. It's funny. So in contrast of what's of what's currently on screen, so the cat and the girl, just because I know that scene. So the cat's like, hey, so there's this so there's this king, you know, and you could, you know, and you could go over there and marry a cat and, you know, be the queen of this area. And she's like, what? I could do that. Um, so it's kind of this like, here's this here's this here's this thing. Oh, surprise. In yours, it looks like this crow is just making fun of someone and just like yelling obscenities at this person. This person is just like, why is this crow yelling at me like this? <laughs> well, that's just be the difference between cats and crows, if you didn't know that. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you, but every time uh, crows are calling, they're talking mad trash. You know, you know, your tax returns are never going to be are never going to be as much as what you put in. Right. <laughs> um all right so what is your stance on like feather fingers or would you feather prefer... fingers yeah so like um so like you know when don bluth has you know their his birds manipulate things with like a feather thumb and fingers and donald duck and in contrast to um have you ever seen anything of like the red wall series no, I'm not sure what that is. So in theirs, they keep things a little more grounded in the sense that those birds, the wings of those birds are wings. Like they don't try to do anything except like maybe like push stuff with their wings, but they manipulate stuff with their beaks and their talons. So they keep things very kind of realistic, but you know, it's still these talking birds and stuff like that. So on those two sides of the coin, like, you know, what, what are your thoughts? <laughs> I like it when animals use use the appendages that they generally like to use. I think uh, I I like it when they use their claws and beaks. I probably like if I were if I think about an animal getting more intelligent and uh, to, uh, and then being able to manipulate things and do stuff. I don't think like me as smarter bird uh, would be like I'm gonna shove my face into this to do something. Like maybe every once in a while, I think I scratch myself. Um, when like my hands are busy, I will just like bite my arm um, if I'm itching. Mm. Uh, so it's in a rarity, but I know that is dangerous. I would not put a sword in my mouth because I don't want to smash anything that's happening in that area. But I think it would be more natural that I would just get more and more dexterous with my feet and do things there. And I think it's okay that there's that disparity of like, man, feet are gross and strange and clumsy, but it's like, that's human talk. Humans have gross, clumsy feet. Crows, not so much. And I think that's a, that's an okay thing that I think is worth like exploring in my mind. Uh, How about you? I mean, like, do you like it? Like, I, I don't know. It just breaks. It breaks the moment for me, and it turns it so much more cartoony and silly. Uh, uh, when like when the feathers all of a sudden have enough rigidity and flexibility to wrap around something and manipulate something that i'm no longer in like i'm in like silly dream and not in the surreal like dream of like man that could happen if like the bird was just like picking up stuff with its feet yeah um i i don't know i'm kind of I'm kind of indifferent because it's just um, I've seen really good representations of both uh, just in the sense that like it wasn't it wasn't jarring enough to like take me out of what the story was because um, like I said my example for when they were more nat like when they had more natural movement was in Redwall and in that scenario they didn't really like the birds in there didn't really try to use weapons like they didn't like you know, bring down a mouse or something and take their spear or something and then try to use it themselves. Usually when something, when something would try to stab at a crow or something, the crow would like take the beak, grab the spear, disarm the thing, and then break the spear with their beak and say, okay, now it's my turn. And then start pecking the, you know, start pecking at the other thing. So they would actually attack like actual birds would. Um, whereas in um, The Secret of Nim, most most Disney representations of like some kind of um, bird 
I'm, I'm mostly using Donald Duck because I can't think of another example off the top of my head immediately. But um, they don't. They also, you know, they also don't really try to use their other limbs for <laughs> to manipulate stuff. I can't remember if Jeremy did use his feet for stuff, but. Um, usually when they usually you know it's like two sides of the spectrum so if they use their natural things they don't you know they're obviously not trying to use their wings but if they do use their wings they're not using their beak or their feet for anything else besides walking and biting stuff so you know it's not like one has one has all everything in it does that make sense <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. And I guess I've seen uh, videos of crows manipulating stuff, and they like to use their beak. But I would still say those crows are dumb. Um, <laughs> and once they start evolving more and start figuring out that, you know, maybe I shouldn't put my face in stuff, uh, I'd be a lot better off. Um, that, you know, we'd get to a new age of awesome crows doing things. It's the age of awesome doing things. Yeah. I, I gave it a shot. <laughs> you know what? That's all we can ask. And uh, I'm sorry we can't keep you on the show anymore, but... <laughs> no! <laughs> um, Ew. That's gross. Dang. See? But... I don't know. Like... Them using beaks, it just seems dangerous. Have you seen, I don't know, it, it kind of reminds me, have you, I think I've seen it, like uh, like pictures of like crows um, that uh, have broken their beaks and other crows have like fed them. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just like, they'll catch things. <laughs> Animals are kind of awesome sometimes. I don't know, awesomeness is awesome sometimes. We'll just, we'll leave it at that. Dang. Any things. Um, so with that, let's move on to a more modern cartoon representation. Uh, I believe this goes underneath this. Yes. Okay. And boom jams. So <clears throat> with that, if we go to YouTube, um, there is an awesome little short animatic called Boomerang in a Gunfight, created by Mike Pitts. Um, I have a great appreciation for anything that's, you know, individually made or, you know, small, small group get together and create a little short cartoon. This thing covers a lot of little aesthetic bullet points for me in the sense that it's cute characters, it's good voice acting, it has a interesting, it has a funny little storyline, but mostly... Um, it has the depiction of two types of um, creatures. So those that actually have like um, paws or claws, and they actually do have append like um... wow. fingers. Digits. Yeah, they've got little opposable digits, and mm -hmm. then they've got you know more hooved creatures like sheep and uh, donkeys and such. <laughs> and it's just funny the difference of how they depict them. So in one, we see. You know, in one instance, we see that the character that actually has hands can manipulate things like a boomerang and other stuff. Well, the character who doesn't exactly have opposable thumbs is kind of resorted to um, lifting up a rock <laughs> as their only sort of method of offense slash defense. Uh, and it's just kind of a running gag, and I really appreciate that it's like a running gag within this uh, within this cartoon. Uh in one scene, we have the mayor who actually throws, who actually tosses a gun to um, our deputy over here, and he just realizes, oh, I, right, that's why I don't use a gun, because I don't actually have the ability to lift it up. And it's always, it's always really pleasing to see when, um, when there is, there is a, a, a a feature within a film and then the developers and the screenwriters actually just like double down on that and make it super obvious to the audience. Um, I showed this, I, I forced you to watch this. Uh, what are your thoughts on on their manipulation of, of items and their choices? 
it it was like uh and we kind of like touched on this in another part that it, it matters when it's funny when it's interesting like there's moments when they're picking up stuff and they just somehow pick it up with a hoof and hold it straight forward like and it works and you're like okay like it's not funny there there wouldn't be an interesting gag moment at that part uh and other parts where it's like okay that was a funny haha i get your joke but i don't know it's i, I think i think it's well thought out they put out uh, some ideas but then there's other things that like i don't know when i look at it i'm like okay you have your two kinds you have people with hang or you have creatures with fingers that can do stuff and ones with hooves that can't do stuff so does that mean well, each one that stuff. has fingers is in charge of putting clothes on the ones with that don't have those appendages like i like eh. to imagine that a lot of the things for the for those with hooves are just easily like slide and stuff so instead of having like a pullover they would just have um Oh no, yeah, pullover. But their uh, their their coat racks would be different. It would be already kind of open, so they just have to slide in. Yeah, but who puts that there? Who takes these off of them? They just slide out of it. <laughs> no, <laughs> nasty. And then just like discard these. Never again. Buy me another like uh, I don't know pants contraption that I can just hop into. It's just bizarre. And then they just have to wiggle at them. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, the gags, I, I get it. I get it. There are moments when it, when it works and it's relevant to the story. And other times where it's just like, uh, <laughs> they, just, <laughs> they just wash their bodies and their clothes at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Nasty creature. <laughs> Nasty. Just let it rot off your body. Well, if you out there haven't seen it, I suggest you go and give it a look at. Develop your own opinions. Laugh, cry, get angry, or support. <laughs> I would suggest you support because I think they did a really good job. But it is kind of funny. Uh, but, all right, so then no, let's move here. away from Zat, and uh, I'd like to go into things that are actually upcoming. So the last sort of little section that I have to just sort of took a boot uh let's get rid of you and you and then so there is a film upcoming called rumble and one of the characters in here i don't know if he's like the antagonist or if he's just kind of like the neutral sort of second party but one of them is called tentacular and he's this shark octopus monster person um, it's gross. What the hell is that? <laughs> the, the character design initially looks kind of basic. It's like, oh, okay, cool. So it's just a shark to push, right? But as the trailer kind of goes on, um, there's a lot of other things that kind of really play to uh, a lot of factors that uh, appeal to me. One of them is when anything kind of glows in a manner. <laughs> it's a really it's a really cool thing especially when it's that um that undersea type um kind of phosphor like phosphorescence is that a thing um but i'm also a big sucker for kind of like that dark or the blue shades <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's but... pretty i was a stupid sentence i hated it i'm a sucker <laughs> for anything that glows yeah i, I tried i tried and it's not working. <laughs> My cough is going <laughs> off. Um, but the things that I want to point out with um, in this image, in comparison to the previous image, are the um, the fact that the tentacles kind of come together, coalesce together, and actually form a relative arm shape. And I thought that was a really cool um, design choice, in the sense that you have these three these three separate limbs, but they all come together into one limb that we all sort of recognize as a really beefy arm mm -hmm. uh and that was the first that was probably the first time i've actually seen that pulled off in that manner like you kind of got there was kind of that element in um dave when he became dr octavius brine but you know you had that lab coat overall that that kind of 
hit all that stuff. So this one just goes from tentacles to you know muscle arm, and there's you know there's no there's nothing to really inhibit that transition. And I thought that was I've just never seen that before in a in a design. I'm surprised it hasn't come up sooner. Have you seen I feel like I've seen that before, but I don't know. It, I don't. I have no clue what what this thing is that you're talking about. Um, but are there humans in here? Yes. Are there things with human hands? Okay, so it has a precedent, and it was like, you know what? I'm pretty awesome, but you know what? I need some human hands. <laughs> yeah. So the 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 initial premise that I get from the trailer is that instead of these monster these big monsters and these kaiju coming out of the ocean and like wrecking cities you know like godzilla in tokyo um mm -hmm. they've managed to kind of come together with humanity and now they kind of have these jobs and one of the more prestigious of these jobs is in this sort of show match wrestling ring type of a thing mm -hmm. so instead of going and wrecking this town instead everyone can kind of enjoy these monsters kind of coming into the ring and kind of you know but still fighting each other so they get all the they get all the excitement and all the but you know of, of these two monsters coming together and clashing but with none of the um property damage and fear that would normally come with a generic like monster in a human society type scenario mm -hmm. and um they actually do throw in that he does he can manipulate his tentacle arm things into a relative sort of hand with thumbs type things which is an interesting choice to me because the tentacles themselves as we've established with dave are already really proficient at like gripping things and like holding stuff but to actually like mimic hands is an interesting um direction to go with that I think no I, I, it's an interesting design again like i feel bad for these creatures that feel like they need human hands every once in a while <laughs> just to fit in but whatever i think there's always some level of if you've if you've had this well, i don't know if i don't know if this premise is exists here but let's say for hypothetical reasons that the premise exists that the whole godzilla in tokyo thing has you know has been a thing and now there's this precedent of like uh oh monster in a town we have to run and scream you know they kind of have to kind of dissuade this so by making hands i guess it kind of makes them more relatable in a sense <laughs> i'd love to see their like their pr trainer person i'm like okay okay we're gonna make hands now guys no you have to do hands and jerry <laughs> yes you have to wear pants I'm like ah oh, damn <laughs> Well, that's the one thing, too, that I haven't seen, is that they don't get to wear pants. Well, you get one or the other. That was that was part <laughs> of the negotiation table. Like, oh, you want hands or you want pants? Because I can do this thing all day, and, like, all the tentacles going everywhere, and someone was like, yeah, that's kind of nasty. Yeah, so this movie kind of looks like, kind of going off topic a little bit, the movie itself kind of looks like it. Um, it's following the same premise as... Um, there's this prestigious arena or there's this prestigious lifestyle that's kind of established our underdog a red monster that i haven't shown yet because he has normal ish kind of hands and it's not all that much to talk about within this topic but um mm -hmm. he's kind of the underdog and wants to get into this prestigious life but he's you know he's got to kind of work for you know rocky kind of style you know he's got to kind of get from sure this fat chubby needs a training and, sequence yeah the, the, only, the, only, the only thing though that i'm missing is the established um what's it called the uh the problem to solve within this thing because it's not so much like this shark character doesn't seem too much like a douche to be like you know oh you know he really needs to you know he's the reason why i i can't show my face anymore type thing it doesn't look like that kind of a premise so it looks like there's going to be like a third party like thing that comes in and everyone's gonna try to come in together and the shark dude's gonna like wimp out or something and the red dude's gonna be like all right i guess i'm gonna have to stand up and then he's gonna be the hero or something it looks like that i'll be hmm. very surprised if it goes in a different direction but <laughs> that looks like so whoever cool. makes this please surprise tyler <laughs> I, 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 like, I like either storyline but it'd be just surprising no, no, if it... 
subverts. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know how to do this very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I don't know. So but I think we're missing out on some awesome weapon holding options if they're just going to make hands. <laughs> they could do so many other things. You could put things on so many different tentacles. I know, to think that he technically has six limbs that aren't used for for mobility, he could just like like he could just like Shiva like around and just like just like wreck people or wreck his wreck a, wreck his opponents with like six different six different varying ways of attack. <laughs> I mean, maybe he's holding back like uh like Zoro. Uh, and it was like, ah, you've defeated me, but you don't even know that was just my first form. <laughs> it splits everything about. Well, like, the... but wait, I'm gonna put down my big weapon and I'm gonna hold up these like small things because like we don't have enough strength in each of these. But ah, now I've got six knives. <laughs> you you've knocked my one big sword out of my hands, but now I've got six little knives. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that does bring up an issue or. Uh, uh, a fact that we brought up earlier in which you were saying that, um, you know, usually the tentacle things are these little, you know, these relatively weak appendages and they, the strength of them is usually when they use leverage or some sort of, um, mm -hmm. yeah, leverage. <laughs> um, so it's interesting to note that those, that his three tentacles, he chooses to wrap them all around themselves into one, you know, into one solid sort of limb so that in that sense, the three are kind of supporting, you know, are supporting each other to kind of help strengthen the entire limb. So instead of having just one weak tendril, they all come together, you know, to, uh, what's it called? Fortify, to fortify into one actual, actual functional limb. Is yeah. one example of why. I guess that's how muscles work in general. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just a nasty uh, bone thing that has, just millions and millions, probably not that many, but a bunch of tentacles going across our body at all points that have decided to just like, you know, be a part of each other. That if we could just figure out and remember how to do it, we could take our tentacles apart away from our bone source, like some nasty octopus banana thing. <laughs> and hold everything that we would want uh, that we'd want to hold at the same time we give the best hugs crazy parasite looking thing yeah what is the silliest weapon you can imagine this character holding or the silliest item in general that you can imagine this character holding you cut out what is the silliest, silly weapon yeah what is the silliest item that you can imagine this character holding or what's the silliest thing this character could do with his limbs? <laughs> this is like the perfect <laughs> moment for you to be cutting out on everything. Dang it. Um, okay. What silliest is the, song. Yeah, well, uh, what is the silliest thing you can imagine him doing with his limbs? I want to say, like, going on multiple apps at the same time, uh, dating apps, and swiping left and right at multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> uh, oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, social media would be so weird with these creatures. <laughs> what, would their, what would the monster's version of Tinder be? Smasher? <laughs> are, you, are you on Wrecker? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well <laughs> yeah let's move away from that topic real fast what is the most awesome I and kiss I don't know. <laughs> what's the most awesome thing you can imagine him doing with his limbs um i like the idea of each tentacle at the end of it holding some smaller creature with those whole things holding things <laughs> <laughs> and it just like wiggles them around and those things like cut out uh cut at them like it just wields crabs so the man bear shark theory yeah except this time maybe this gigantic uh octopus thing wields some bears wielding know, sharks man bear shark was one thing bear holding shark sorry bear holding shark mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's a bear holding a shark um yeah that's holding a spear or lasers whatever you like 
it's got it tied onto its head. Oh yeah, I, I forgot that when I was compiling all these images together, um, just like how I was comparing him to Dave earlier, um, another comparison with Dave is that um, even though even though the um, the Madagascar depiction of the tentacles coming together to form like a human digit was covered over by a lab coat. And again, I was disappointed with that. It was kind of um, satisfying to see that there, that the concept of these multiple tendrils coming together to make a human similar thing, um, ha you know, it actually has um, been happening. I did forget that <laughs> earlier. Mm. But it, I think that's a really cool concept. It's one that I don't remember a lot when I'm trying to design a character for a story or something. Like if I'm trying to throw something at a D&D &D group, you know, it's really hard for me to think like, how can I change? How can I change this character to be kind of different? Or how can I make this Kraken not seem like a Kraken and then like surprise the group and like, ah, I'm not actually a sea. I'm, a, I'm not actually a storm giant. I'm actually this, this thing. 50, puts, uh, 50 foot cephalopod. Wow, that was really hard to say for some reason. 50 foot cephalopod. Um, and I just I just tricked y'all. <laughs> I think, I don't know. Uh, maybe it's something that the, we don't have, you don't get such strong visuals uh, in D&D, depending on what you're doing. Like, uh, maybe you could do it in a book very well. Um, if you took the time to really describe it, and you could do that with like people, but trying to describe that like this, uh, the doctor takes off his gloves, and then uh, you notice that his hands peel apart and turn into multiple ten uh, tentacles. Like you kind of get it, but my vision is different from someone else's vision on what that looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, that I think I don't think how many people would get this shark man business uh, or shark the puss thing i guess that's true well that's why i kind of threw in the crack in there because that's kind of a more um simple sort of there's not as many elements there because like you know that the kraken either looks like an octopus or a squid and then the rest of the rest of it kind of you know you just or have to some of, weird monkey thing yeah we don't, talk about, we don't we don't talk about that one <laughs> um <laughs> But yeah, and then all you have to do D&D &D wise is just describe your whatever character it's trying to disguise itself as like melting into this kind of cephalopod looking creature. Whereas if you've mm. established that this guy is a shark bot, you know, a shark torso with, um, you know, with cephalopod tent, you know, cephalopod limbs for arms, it establishes a lot of features already that when you're, you know, verbally describing this to someone, it's very I, I feel it's very easy for those descriptions to kind of get mixed up and they go okay so wait wait what so he was a giant and now he's a shark headed octopus thing I don't know what what am I looking at here right where I think uh visuals are lovely man mm -hmm. especially when you get them right yeah um so of the things, if you were to design a character that was not humanoid, but had to wield, let's say, a spear or, let me see, a mundane item, uh, had to wield a socket wrench, what, what body would you choose? And then what limb would you try, or how would you try to attach the socket wrench to this character? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, draw, I, I don't know. My mind kind of just turned stupid for a second. So I'm excited. Really? Uh, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, I had this idea. I don't know. This thing popped into my mind of like, see, there's your belly button, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> And so maybe that's where this socket wrench thing goes. <laughs> and so what, every time, and, every time you but this is like abs, some polywhirl <laughs> thing, yeah, because these things, <laughs> these muscular structures, kind of float and twist and turn around. It's kind of like their their digestive system is like a washer machine. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
It's, uh... And so it's just going to socket wrench at that. And if it was using a weapon, uh, it could easily make that make that that transition into into the into that because that that would be its spear, and it would just be like some terrible, terrible drill like thing that would uh, that they'd be able to stab forward with that oh with that spear, and it, they'd have instead of a spear being like a traditional point, it would probably be one that was spiraled a little bit like a drill so that it <laughs> tore your fleshy bits apart in the best uh, of ways <laughs> and so this is some weird nasty polywhirl thing that just has like legs again stuff looks like it's coming out of its crotch but you guys get my get my vision <laughs> alright I can see that <laughs> uh okay <laughs> now it just looks like an angry frog of some kind <laughs> so that that's how that's how it would be uh on my thing probably less angry eyebrows and more seriousness if i decided to take the time to like shade and do nasty things but uh i like this of this churning belly bits <laughs> All right. what's your design how would you use it um, I'm super basic. So again, this is why I get really jealous when I see um, professional designers and stuff come up with concepts or, you know, or redesign a concept like um, these multiple tendrils coming together into one like stable arm. So in the sense that um, my design would be just like, um, you know, if if I had to take like an animal character and, um, so like you know in Zootopia how like they would they would kind of just like if they needed to run like really fast they would drop on all fours and just kind of go, just like a normal mm -hmm. animal would. So that's kind of my design is just to kind of keep the the body shape in general so it's kind of this functional between bipedal and quadrupedal sort of thing. And then my main focus would be, okay, so how, if it was a tool belt, say, you know, how do those tools not fall out when it's in a quadrupedal, like, shit, I have to get all the way across my, um, my junkyard in order to, you know, get the mail and then come all the way back and work on this Jeep or something, you know, how does everything in my tool belt not fall out all over the floor while I'm running? Um, that's... That's my that's my design angle. <laughs> <laughs> so so keep it mostly human, because like I don't know, or mostly the animal that it's supposed to be inspired from. Because like as I'm drawing, I'm starting to think like, what if this thing was more like some weird like spider like thing, and it had like multiple limbs, and so that the belly bit was like the best, the best bit for holding and turning and churning. Now it looks like some kind of horror, like some kind of horror thing that like ling like lingers in the shadows, and then when the person's like looking under the bed, it looks up, and then it hears like a book or something move on the shelf. It looks up there, and it's like right there on the top shelf, and it lump like it jumps down on his face and just drills into the f drills into the person's face like an alien, like an alien spawn. You're just being racist. Look at that smile on him. He's oh. adorable. I thought for a minute that that was a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the mustache. <laughs> there we go. Now it looks like the um, spirited away frogs. Yeah. <laughs> with their yeah. little stencil stashes. We're good with that. It doesn't <laughs> shave very much. Um, it's hard to shave with it. They would have like a, I guess they would look like electric razor shavers where one would have to shave it with the belly or it would like churn one uh, and it's like a flex wrench that then goes uh, up to its face. And bzz, 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 bzz. <laughs> <laughs> um, Let's start wrapping things up and I'll just pose the final question of, so of, so like I said, there's not a lot of depiction of like defensive things. So what sort of, um, defensive things could you put on a quadrupedal creature and how would you do it that would be uh, acceptable in some aspect 
Because it always depends on how big things are. I think putting, um, if you if you somehow got the um, like the service dog sheet, like the service dog vest on it, stuck a shield on the back, just like a you know just like a backpack, but it had like a um, like a garbage truck kind of like um, hinge on it, so that if the you know if the if the dog kind of like leaned forward real fast, it would like shump over. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of go in front like a like a snow shovel or something and then it just like you know gets up and it just kind of clinks onto the back i think that'd be interesting um it'd be very the design of that would be very clunky i feel i think i need to try to do a like a mock-up in blender or something but um that's the first thing that kind of comes to my head as far as like how can you do a defensive item on something <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Let's see. What would I do with you, weird frogman? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I don't. I don't know. Where would you hold your shield? I think. I think what that needs is they just really need some good old knee pads. Like we'll get some skater business kind of thing where it would strap onto each of these uh, nasty knee joints. And you could make them actually really big to the fact that they, uh, that they could come up and walk and kind of articulate them a little bit, uh, a little bit more on each of those. And you just get some shoulder pads. Because all it needs to do is then hunch up at like a little nasty little spider and get those, get its shoulder bits moving to uh, to block it. Can you submit this to Riot as a new Urgot skin? Urgot? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I could see that. Would, so is this is there are there so if the if the socket wrench is coming out of its belly button, are there mechanical is this like an android creature? Nah, it just uses that like that strong bit to hold it. Got it. Okay. Cuz I was about to say so can can its base But I don't know how it would put these things on. Can its base pivot? It could, can it have like little like little java arms? I guess. <laughs> Maybe. They're like two little T-Rex hands up here. <coughs> All right, and so while even struggles, step. while even struggles to, with my with my request of Java arms, um, we're gonna slowly close out this session for today. Uh, tomorrow, I am going to be joined by Andrew, and we're going to be talking about um, video games in which we had to kind of create our own stories. So if you didn't, so if as a child you thought that you know Princess Peach not being in that castle was kind of a downer, and so in your child mind you were like, well. I'll rationalize why the why the princess wasn't in this castle, um, that kind of a thing. Uh, for me, I had a lot of that in uh, Morrowind, and I had a lot of it in. Um, I don't have my notes in front of me, but there's some examples for you. <laughs> there's some really bad <laughs> examples for you. Uh, if you happen to miss this episode, you can always catch it on the on um, the YouTube channel at level three under. Um, What's it called? Chatting, talk show chatter, talk show, talk, talk show chatter. Links are in the description underneath. And uh, you can get updates from me on my Twitter. If you follow me at um, Foxstar underscore, that's F-O-X-S-T-A-R-R -R underscore. Don't forget the underscore. It's important. Um, <laughs> Be sure to drop a follow, a like, wherever it's relevant, and you know, subscribe where available. And to even, you can always reach him and send him any art that's relevant to what we have just recently discussed at Instagram at evenstarlong, correct? Yep. All right. That place should be pretty decent. 
And yes, this always. So always, if any of what we discussed here, if you felt you were wrong and you could you could doodle up a depiction that could totally, you know, prove at the very, at the very least me wrong in some fashion, or we inspired. Yeah, because you can't prove of, me wrong. <laughs> or you've inspired some sort of Im or this has inspired some sort of image in your head and you think it's really funny, please share it with us. And we'd like to, you know, put it up on like a, um, I'd like to create a little segment afterward or maybe even before of, you know, stuff that you guys have submitted. So um, until then, uh, even do you have anything else you want to say? No, nothing really. All like right, some weird then. stuff in the world. <laughs> Wash your hands. Yeah. Don't hoard stuff, you weirdos. <laughs> yeah, with that, you know, stay calm. We'll get through this. And uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of the weekend and the go into the week strong. All right? Later. <laughs> Bye.